This is News 8 This Morning. Hope you had a great weekend, everyone. Wow, yeah, the Emmys were, were amazing last night. You and I both tuned in for a little bit, Stella, and uh, just to see Sheets Creek uh, winning all those awards, that was uh, amazing because I just started watching that. I'm loving it. I know. I haven't watched it yet, but my husband and I were watching it, the, the Emmys last night. He's like, I think we need to watch the show because I was in the kitchen cooking, and all I kept hearing was Sheets Creek. I'm like, did they say their name again? <laughs> yeah. So a big congratulations to them. We'll have a recap coming up uh, shortly. Uh, but in the meantime, though, we're going to get to your headlines. We begin with this. This morning, many local business owners fearing the likely possibility we will fall into the state's most restrictive tier soon and that could force more businesses to close their doors and now some business owners are saying they will defy the state's orders in order to survive. News 8's Evan Narani live outside the county administration building with an update for us. Evan. Good morning. That's right. Some of those business owners are going to be here today ahead of that county board of supervisors meeting uh, just to hold a rally for those businesses supporting more local control over this decision making as opposed to the state making the decisions for us. They say uh, they've gone through this multiple times of shutting down and reopening. And now as we head toward the possibility of a third closure for indoor restaurants, gyms, movie theaters, uh, where we could be moving to that more restrictive tier, many of those businesses say they're going to defy those orders and that they believe the county needs to be doing more. Now, one business did not make it through this pandemic. That's Tiger Tiger in North Park. Uh, they had to close their doors permanently thanks to COVID-19. And here are a few thoughts from that co-owner. It's kind of like sitting at the blackjack table and going, I lost a lot of money. You know, I just need one good hand, but there's not, we don't have a good hand. So that's what a lot of those business owners that will be here today are saying. This comes as county case rates have risen above the tier necessary to close many businesses until another drop in cases. The state has placed us in tier two, which keeps many of those businesses open for now. But a new assessment that's expected from the state tomorrow could drop us back to tier one, that more restrictive tier. So this afternoon, members of the We Mean Business Coalition will be meeting in front of the county administration building, calling for more local control as the state threatens San Diego County county with a lower tier. They say the governor's metric system is flawed and shows no real end to the lockdown. Some of those businesses with the support of Supervisor Jim Desmond have vowed to defy those state orders if we do drop into that purple tier. Now they met last week that county board of supervisors to discuss possible legal responses to the state that could mean a lawsuit against the state possibly to remove San Diego State University's numbers which they say would uh, keep us permanently or at least firmly in tier two for now but uh, they haven't actually announced any formal legislation or a lawsuit of any kind. Again, they're meeting at 4 p.m. today to discuss what's going to happen possibly tomorrow as the state makes its next assessment. Outside of the county administration building, I'm Evan Narani. Back to you. Evan, thanks. Let's look at the numbers now. County leaders reporting 284 new COVID-19 cases out of more than 9,000 tests for a positive rate of 3%. 49 of those cases are connected to San Diego State University, including their first case among faculty and staff. One new outbreak was reported, making 21 in the past week. No new deaths to report. And this morning, if you need to apply for unemployment, just be advised the EDD is not accepting new unemployment claims for the next two weeks. News 8's Chris Groh joins us live along Harbor Island to explain why this is happening. And Chris, if you're already getting unemployment, don't worry, you're okay. That's right. We can't stress that enough because I can only imagine the stress many of you at home are already feeling. Then seeing this headline and thinking that that stream of unemployment payments trying to help you get through these times may be coming to an end. That is not the case. What's happening is those that will need to file new claims. That service is going to be interrupted for about two weeks. Now we're covering who's impacted. Let's cover why this is happening. According to the EDD, they are saying that they need to do this simply because of a backlog of new claims. There are about 600,000 new claims that haven't been processed. On top of that, there's also 1 million cases where residents received payments but are awaiting a resolution to their modified claims. Now the department also claims it's using outdated technology while experiencing this unprecedented wave of unemployment claims. So the department estimates that all the while about 2.1 million residents are out of work statewide. Therefore, the EDD says it's not accepting these un new unemployment claims for the next two weeks, partly to get through the massive amount of work, but also to improve their process and to prevent fraud in the future. However, there are people, as we have pointed out, that could be impacted by this spoon soon. 
We spoke with Tony Wells, a married father of two teenagers who's been through the ringer with EDD. And now that he's done with the process, he feels bad because he spent about five months trying to get through to file his unemployment claims. And now he's seeing that those that are coming after him may have an even tougher time. People are already, you know, in chaos. So to make to, for them to stop and make people wait another two weeks, I, I can't imagine. I feel so bad for those people. Now, the EDD says that part of the process here is that this will cut down on those long wait times like Mr. Wells experienced there with that five months of waiting, five months of going back and forth, waiting to see if your unemployment claim will be processed. So that is also another reason why the EDD says that they are taking this two week break here on new unemployment claims. Now, if you do need to file, you are uh, encouraged to pro uh, provide your contact contact information during this time up until October 5th so the EDD can contact you immediately afterwards. Eric and Stella. Chris, thank you. Yeah, I can't imagine having to wait five months. You need the money, especially. Mm. Meanwhile, local child care providers impacted by the coronavirus pandemic still have a chance to get some financial assistance. The deadline to apply for a county grant program is now today is today at 5 p.m. The amount each child care provider could receive really depends on their size. For instance, those caring for a maximum of 14 children are eligible for they're uh, eligible of up to thirty five hundred dollars. Eric. Let's get your morning rush here at 608. The search is on for a suspect behind what police are calling a possible string of arsons in Chula Vista. It comes as someone set a playground on fire at Veterans Park over the weekend. You see all the damage out there. It's just tough to see. Neighbors say they woke up to something that sounded like an explosion on Saturday. Investigators say this was the sixth fire in a span of three days in the same area. If you have any information, you're asked to contact the Chula Vista Fire Department. An attempted kidnapping happened as a family was leaving a Costco in broad daylight. This was at the Vista location on Hacienda Drive. The Sheriff's Department says it happened just before 3 in the afternoon yesterday. A family was backing out of the parking lot when a man opened the door and tried to take a two-year-old. Police arrested the suspect, identified as Adam Gl Glavinek. He has been booked into the Vista Detention Facility. Cal Fire still offering free drive-up COVID-19 testing this week. Today there will be testing sites located at Valley Center Elementary School and Potrero Community Center. You can call 211 to schedule an appointment. And Sweetwater Union High School District will discuss plans to reopen classes for in-person learning today. In a letter to parents, the district announced it would share next steps towards a return to on-campus learning with the community. As of now, the district says it will continue distance learning through at least October 2nd. Meanwhile, the Solana Beach School District will be returning to campus in phases this week. Starting today, students who committed to the on-site scholars will return to campuses. Those students will have staggered arrival and departure times. They will only be on campus for limited days per week. It's about time. The Padres are back in the playoffs for the first time since 2006. Yeah, 14 years, and they needed some extra innings to pull it off. The Friars got some timely hitting in the 11th inning of yesterday's game against the Seattle Mariners. Mitch Moreland and Jerickson Provar helped power the offense. Then in the bottom of the inning, the pitching took care of the rest, and here's the call. Swing and a miss. He struck him out for the first time in 14 years. The San Diego Padres have clinched their spot in the postseason. Is this the best Padres team ever? We will find out in October. Oh, the Padres, they won it. Yeah, that won it for them. The final score, 7-4 to four after the game. Padres commentator Mark Grant summed up what it means for the team. A very emotional one at that look. It's been too long. And a lot of it's emotional because, you know, I wish, I wish we were on um, XM or, or Sirius right now because I would, I would use some salty language right now to tell people how I really feel. So I'll clean it up. Uh, just sick and tired of uh, other teams beating up on the Friars. And for them to win today and clinch a spot, it's really, really special. Oh, that, you can just hear the emotion mm -hmm. from Mark there. You can see him shaking how important it is to him and the rest of the Friar faithful. So if the playoffs started today, the Padres would first play the Miami Marlins. Then a potential rematch 
with the Los Angeles Dodgers. Yes, amazing. Now to Jenny with a look at a special Padres edition of what is trending. Can't get enough of this, right, Jenny? No, I mean, what else are you going to talk about? Right? The buzz growing all over, of course, on social media. Where else? The team is shouting out to those who matter the most, you, the fans. So on the Padres official Twitter page, they posted this tweet saying, quote, this is your moment, too, for San Diego and all of our Friar faithful. That's good that they're poor. I mean, that's what matters, the fans, right? Closer Trevor Rosenthal also expressed his excitement in a tweet. He said, quote, let's go, San Diego. You ready for this? Respect, San Diego. Now, others gave thanks to the fans who waited outside Petco Park to greet them after the big win. Will Myers took a lap with his scooter inside the locker room. Fernando Tatis Jr. <clears throat> showed off his uh, athleticism, if you will. <laughs> That's got to hurt, right? He's been watching me do the splits. He was just trying to one-up me, right? That's right. Tatis did the splits. He was only, by the way, he was only seven years old the last time the Padres made it to the playoffs. So I assume that would make anyone want to do the splits. Yeah. Huh? Uh, well, he's got the dance moves. He's got the moves on the field, too. Or he is so impressive. He's one of the big reasons why we are making this playoff push. Yeah, Slam Diego, right? That's yes. the name yeah. that they've been getting. Diego. So big congratulations to them. This, the last time this happened was in 2006. And Eric, we were talking about this. Um, do you remember what you were doing in 2006? The, that was the year I got married, 2006. There you go. Yeah, married so, in 06. Uh, yeah, 2006, a long time ago. That, I can't believe it's been that long since the Friars have been in playing playoff baseball. But it's the year 2020. So, of course, this is going to be the <laughs> year right. where we can wow. expect the unexpected. We can use that, right, Jenny? We yeah, no joke. Yeah, thank you so much. And still to come, is TikTok here to stay? The latest as we reach the president's deadline for a company to make a deal. Plus, replacing Justice Ginsburg's seat in the Supreme Court has turned into a race against the clock for Republicans. But Democrats say they are not backing down. And the fight against the Bobcat fire in Los Angeles facing new challenges with winds and humidity. News 8's Nadia Rampour is breaking it all down for us.